Hi everyone, it's Steve Wiss here from the Nordic Football Podcast. Hope you've all enjoyed the recent international break and uh, looking forward to the return to club football this weekend. The interview you're about to hear is with Jonathan and he interviewed the former IFK Varnamo manager Robin Asterhead who has now become the chief scout at Malmo. Now just a bit of a disclaimer here beforehand, um, the recording was done on the 17th of November at this stage, we were unaware that Robin was going to become the chief scout at Malmo. Uh, he kept that one quiet. So parts of the interview might sound a little bit strange, but uh, we've decided to go with it anyway. Uh, hope you all enjoy it. It's a great and very interesting listen uh, with uh, Robin Asterhead. So Jonathan's going to take it away now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of the Nordic Football Podcast. My name is Jonathan Faduba, and we are back for another show. The international break is over, and I'm delighted to say we have another special guest. We've been we've been reading them off in the last few weeks. Uh, of course, um, a few weeks back on the podcast, we had uh, the Mialbi manager, um, Anders Torstensen, and we've had a lot of other special guests. Sean Constable also joined us uh, to talk about his time at Moss on the last show. Uh, and we did mention, I did mention on that show that we have a a potential special guest coming from the uh, the, the Super Etta and to talk about uh, uh, the lower leagues of, of Sweden. And we have managed to track him down. So I'm really, really happy to say that uh, Robin Asterhead joins us as um, uh, on this week's show. Robin is the manager of EF Corvanamo. Uh, you might have to help me pronounce that, Robin. But uh, yeah, basically, it's one of the biggest stories of the season in Sweden, without any shadow of a doubt. Varnamo have been promoted. Uh, towards Fenskan. It's an incredible story, which we're going to get into in a minute. But uh, before we do that, Robin, welcome to the show. How are you today? Thank you, Jonathan. I think the pronunciation was was quite good, actually. The, the You know, the, the Varnamu part of it, it's not easy for you guys with no A eh in the language. So it's good. I'm happy. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm really good, thanks. It's, uh, it's great to have you on the show. I mean, it's quite an incredible story, this uh, I think, you know, we've had a lot of big stories in, in, in the league over, over the years, um, big club sort of thing going going down or or small teams coming up and things like that. But <clears throat> the story of Varnamo is is an in, incredible one, really. And, you know, you as a young manager as well, which we'll talk about in a minute, you know, it, we, you know, it's just a remarkable story. So I'm looking forward to talking to you about it. Hopefully listeners will, will enjoy this, uh, this interview as well. Uh, Robert, just tell me, just tell me, like, how has everything been for you in the last few weeks? Because you know, Varnabo have just been promoted to Osvenskan. Uh, and, you know, what, what's the feeling like for you at this moment in time? You must be on cloud nine. Yeah, um, I really am on, on cloud nine, I have to say. <laughs> the the last couple of weeks has been uh, incredible, really. From uh, from this, you know, looking forward to the last games, being nervous and hoping for, okay, if we can manage to do this, this will be really nice. And uh, to achieve it and to... To do it in the way that the the game three games from from now or was where we went uh, two nil down uh, really early in that game and managed to turn it around with a with a last second finish and you can imagine the feelings going to towards the like in the the, the players the the crowd the the coaching staff so all from this uh, you know. Um, joy ride up and down in that game to uh, to then securing the the promotion in the next game um, away against Eskilstuna and the celebrate celebrations that come from this like really happy times and the, the last game now we played was against uh, like uh, an old uh, antagonist of mine uh, F- uh, Helsingborg and we managed to win that as well and it, that's the biggest club in Sudbrettan maybe so uh, a lot of good weeks for me actually so i'm very happy yeah i have to firstly say you know a massive congratulations from everyone at the the nordic football podcast we, we do sort of um keep an eye on super s and we don't cover it in as much detail as all svenskan but you know we obviously keep an eye on it and th- this story is is amazing for anyone who, who doesn't really know or understand the team uh, if called varnamo are 109 years old founded in 1912 um the capacity of the stadium is 5,000, i believe and in their history they've never been in all They've been in the third division, uh, the fourth division, recently were promoted to the Super Etten about 10 years ago um, and sort of went up and down over the last 10 years. They had a relegation again, went down to the third tier, got promoted again in 2020 to the to the second tier. Uh, and now 
they're top of the table and, and pretty much going to win the league and go to, uh, well, to the Osvenskan. So the first time in their history. I mean, the other part of this story that's so incredible is, Robin, this is your first ever managerial role as well. You're, if I'm right in saying, I believe you're th- 34 years old or roughly around uh, that age. Uh, and this is your first sort of head coach role. Am, am I right in saying that as well? You, you joined the club in January as head coach. So this is not only the first time ever for Varnamo, but also for yourself as a manager. Uh, so it's a double double whammy in a way. I mean, how big is that for you, taking the team to Spence in your first ever managerial job? Yeah, of course, that that is big. That is, uh, we were hoping to do really good things, of course, and we're always, like, I've been always digging into the, the underdog stories and the, the teams who had have done things, done big things with, uh, with a little, with not so much resources but of course it's uh, uh yeah it's incredible we um also have the you know the, the idea of this uh, when when this role was approaching me or how to say uh it was the last last the fall of last year like fall of two, uh, 2020 and this this thing where the the cadiz i, I can't really pronounce it but the, the spanish team cadiz they they beat both uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona, like in in different games that that fall. Yeah. So there was something about this. Okay, of course we can we can compete with every team in every like individual game, uh, and this was the the approach we went into the season with. So uh, of course incredible that we we were able to take it all the way because that wasn't supposed to be possible, uh, but also. Absolutely, the first managerial role, like head coach in a senior team. But I would say that there is some some history in in uh, being in Malmo, of course, with younger players, but always having the like the, the responsibility for the for the coaching and for the for the journey of the teams. So my my um, my idea my idea and my journey has always been to okay, how can we get the most out of these guys and how can we develop these guys in the best possible way and um, almost the same approach from from under i would say under 13 to under 17 to to the first team i would say so um yeah i mean tell me about your story because you know as as i mentioned you know you're you're in your sort of um early 30s nearly mid 30s and you know your background as you've mentioned you've actually been uh at malmo as well as as like a youth coach and things like that so you you have been coaching for quite some time you know uh, yourself, I think I'm right in saying um, you're also FC Copenhagen for a while, coaching the under 19s. But this is your first managerial role. Just tell me, you know, how you get got into football. Did you play, or you know, how did you get into coaching that kind of thing? Yeah, I actually started coaching my my little brother's team in a in a other sport in, in Sweden, like a some kind of indoor hockey, not on ice, but on on um, yeah, like wooden floor. So this was the start of the journey and. He, I think uh, I was about 16, 17 then, but then I had a, had a break for a couple of years and started to to have this coaching role in uh, Malmö's um, under nine team, actually, in 2009. So that was the first coaching role. Uh, and then, like, working with these under nines and under tens this, during the same season, spending a lot of time just to, to show the club that I, I wanted to improve and wanted to to be better and try to work hard to, uh, yeah, to go forward. Just to have older teams, of course, but not just to have older teams, but also really much to improve and to to try to learn as much as I could. So I was in Malmo for for ten years coaching, and then the last four of them was with the under seventeen team, also helping some with the. I was assistant in the Swedish under sixteen national team and. The last year as well, but uh, I would say that most of the coaching in Malmo, and the, the most most must most of the coaching journey in Malmo. So, is it right to say that you know you're from Malmo? Because you, you mentioned there Helsingborg, one of your one of your rivals. I guess um, is it right to say that you're from from Malmo? Yeah, I would say that. That's <laughs> uh, that's true. And and I mean, you know, your promotion was confirmed uh, a couple of weeks ago now just before the international break, you won uh, against AFC Eskilstuna. Incredible scenes on the touchline as your, your promotion was confirmed. Just tell me about the, you know, the atmosphere. I mean, I saw everyone running onto the pitch. I mean, you must have had a lot of champagne that night. You know, what, what's the, 
what's the mood been like around the, around the club? You know, in the last few weeks, because you know, also tell me what were the ex- actual expectations for this season? Well, you know, as far as I can understand, the expectations were not to get anywhere near promotion. Is that right? That's right. The the, the feelings on the on the sideline was a lot of um, how to say uh, relief in the end because now the have been so much talking about promotion and about the the, the one the first two positions in the league and we didn't really like believe that that it would would happen in the end like we of course we believe that we can compete at uh, against every opponent and of course we we uh, we believe that we can do this but still when it's going from okay they're doing some incredible things to now they're you know now they should now there's nothing else than getting promotion and and this pressure was we felt it okay we did some really good results in the in the last i think eight games we have yeah, maybe one loss but otherwise like one draw and then the rest wins so the results were really good but there was always like the way we want to play with some with like you would say a, you would call it a positional game with the like moving the ball to move the opponent and having control of the game and being creative and creating a lot of chances by our own qualities. This uh, we felt that okay, there's something about this that's not uh, perfect. We're not having the courage that we had before, and like it was okay, but we also felt that okay, something is uh, not one hundred percent. So we felt the pressure. I mean, uh, but so a lot of like a big relief when the the final whistle uh, came because poof, now it's now it's done and yeah. to the the question about the expectations the we didn't really have any like risk, goal like uh, position oriented goals where uh, okay you're supposed to be in the middle third or uh, the middle half or the, the the top third or something like this more to as you mentioned before in the in the in pro that there was eight years where Vanamo uh, were in Sudbretan three years ago and uh, there was something about this okay the club wants to be back at el- elite level and and um, try to be able to compete at elite level for uh, for the co- coming time so so to stay was the main I'd say the main goal and uh, we didn't manage, but we managed better. So we're happy about this. Yeah, I mean, and you know, you, you joined the you joined the club in January. Am I right in saying that? Yeah. So That's right. t- tell me how you got got the job. You know, you like you like we mentioned. You know, you've been at different places. Tell me how you got the role. And you mentioned there the expectations weren't really necessarily too too high. You know, maybe maybe even staying in the division would have been a big achievement for you. You, you began your first game against uh, Lance Corner Boys and lost two nil. And then from then on, you went on sort of an incredible run, really, didn't you? Where, you know, you won four games in a row um, and didn't lose again until sort of June. So just talk to me about how you got the job uh, in the beginning. You know, was it kind of, did you know someone at the club or you put your name in? And when you did get the job, what were the things that you did? Because you must have turned the club completely around with, with your managerial abilities. So what are the things that you did when you, when you, when you got the job? Yeah, uh, the job was, it's a lot about relationships and about contacts i would say so this is the this is the first and the main part uh, it started with in malmo going getting really close to a to a guy who uh, works in the methodology uh, department or the youth department with the with the like the playing style uh, joachim nilsson this is the start because he used to play with my uh, my colleague my co-coach because sure. Jonas and I uh, divide the responsibilities 50-50. And they played uh, during like the, the 90s in Malmö, or the 80s, I would say, in the end of the 80s in Malmö, and had a really good relationship from this. So me and Joachim is is really getting close during my time at Malmö. And um, and he, he said, well, we talked about my next step, maybe, and uh, going to the seniors and trying this out. So, so he... he uh, he had a contact with Jonas, and I, I said, okay, maybe I can, maybe I can talk to him. Uh, the thing was that the the fall of two thousand and 
I think it was 18, maybe 17. Uh, Vanamo was doing quite well in the Sudbreta. They were uh, the ending number six, I think, maybe seven. And uh, but the coach, they would like five games to go. The coach uh, had got a new appointment, uh, another job. So right. the the spot would be open. Uh, so I I actually already in 2018 or 17 uh, went to have this um, interview. So I talked to them already then. And then, okay, life went on. Uh, I didn't get it uh, back to Malmo, still trying to do better and try to, to get forward in my coaching. And uh, this Copenhagen opportunity arise. Uh, went to Copenhagen, had a role as uh, assistant coach under 19 with like individual development responsibilities for the players. A, a role that maybe didn't suit me perfectly. Uh, I thought that maybe not so much the big like technical tactical uh, responsibilities that I have been used to in Malmo and that really that's the thing that catch my interest that's the thing I I'm passionate about and I couldn't really give my input on this in the way I I would like to uh, so I I started to we have this uh, yeah, as all of you uh, all of us in the world like the the covid break we uh, that meant that I was like home sent from the from the work, so I've been was home like three four months uh, without working in the club. And during mm. this time, I started to okay, going around to the club, some clubs in the south of Sweden, where I thought okay, this is some interesting places where there are some good coaches. How can I get some conversations going? How can I create some relationships? And how can I learn? Uh, so this, I went to some clubs, and one of them was back to Vanamo, and. Um, had a, a couple of meetings with Jonas and the sporting director Håkan. Uh, and this is how we continued to uh, to talk. <clears throat> yeah, and for those who don't know, Jonas is um, Jonas Turn, I believe, right? Yeah. Who's a bit exactly. of a legendary figure in, in Swedish football. I mean, just tell me about him, because at, at Varnamo, he's he's a very big figure in Varnamo, isn't he? And just tell me about the relationship you have with him and, and his role at the club and, and his history there. Yeah, it's uh, he has a big history uh, playing for Vanamo in the uh, in the start of the eighties, I would say, uh, being uh, a young player and before he went to Malmo, going from from this out in the football world, uh, being uh, professional in in some big clubs. Of course, you know about him. Uh, and back back to Vanamo in I think it was about what can it be like uh, two 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 thousand. Where he uh, took the like coaching role of uh, his son Simon's uh, Simon's age group, uh, bo- the guys born in ninety two and ninety one. Uh, there have been some really successful players from this age group in the in Vanum. Vanum is a, just a small town, like twenty five thousand inhabitants, so it's uh, quite big to have a lot of players from one age, age group going like playing for Kosovo, playing for Sweden, and and so on. And so he started back then. So from uh, from the like 2002, three, four, uh, he has been a part of the club uh, almost all the time. Uh, being a part of the first team, the yeah, the, the three, the last three years. Uh, so when they went down from Sudbretan, he uh, he took the managing role uh, together with some of the coaching team. Uh, like I think they ended like sixth or seventh place in 2019 and then last year they they won promotion with the like the number one position in the in the in the league so this is the role of the last years hmm. and is he currently sort of like a director at the club or or kind of what what's his in current involvement so we, we have the so how to speak how to say that like the the coaching uh the coaching role is Divided 50 50 between us. So we're like right. two, two coaches. Sure. And uh, it's me and him. So I would say that, like, the strength of Jonas is, of course, like the experience and some football knowledge from going long back and like a really good intuition uh, being on the pitch of, okay, this is, this is things that I, I think that um, are happening in the moment that we can do something about. And uh, and the the biggest part I think and the biggest quality he has is his 
his leadership skills, which are really good. I think it's uh, it's re- a, a bit hard to say exactly how, but in a in some way he he gets everyone's guard down. He he really how to say maybe not put the pressure, but make sure that everyone is there for the group and therefore the the best of the group and in a way that is a bit uh, jokey a bit funny but also really serious and um, but you can you can notice that everyone loves being around him like the the atmosphere in our coaching locker room is is really easy because of he he have this, this way of yeah having really bad jokes but making this bad <laughs> joke over and over and over again so the bad joke is uh in the end a really really funny joke yeah uh, but like it's uh it's hard to describe how but in a way his his leadership skills is i think they're really good and and i would say that the bottom line is that he he re- really love he really gives all of himself and he all he really like loves to be in that uh, environment and love the people around him yeah, and you know, it's kind of like, almost like a joint manager role, then, isn't it? Sort of um, sharing the responsibilities. Um, Jonas Stone, yeah. for those who might not know him, he, he played played for Rangers as well, uh, played for Benfica, Roma, won the league with Rangers, uh, and also was uh, part of Sweden's uh, legendary bronze medal side in the 1994 World Cup. So, you know, yeah, as you mentioned, actually. So, yeah, as you mentioned, he's got a huge track record behind him. Um, Robin, tell me, you know, in your first role as a sort of joint manager or, you know, someone who's, who's sort of helping to lead the club. What are the key skills that you need to to manage yeah, in a head coaching capacity? Yeah, good question. Like, I, I would say that the the thing that I base, like the yeah, the thing that I base most on is this constant curious curiousness and constant like willingness to to learn and to be better, like being smart in the like the, in the social social side being uh, a lot, definitely showing the players that of course i'm here for for you and i'm here for the the joint best uh, for all of us and i think it's it's so it's so complex to put this all like to uh to um okay what what's supposed to, what are you doing what are you like that's that's really hard i think the curiousness and the willingness to learn in a in a way that you show that you have competence like you are in my case i would say that my my perks and the things i'm i'm most um, secure on or i believe that i can do well is the like the i'm so i'm quite nerdy about football and then i i think my my knowledge is starting to be quite deep and also that i can sort sort it for the players so okay when the ball possessor is open this and this and this can happen and then of course i make sure that this <laughs> this scenarios might happen during the training sessions over and over and over and over and over again and uh, like yeah the, the continuity in the things and uh, the repetitions in uh, like a complex environment i think this is the the things that have helped us during this year yeah it's fascinating because when you took the role i mean how, how do you share the responsibilities between you you, you mentioned there you're you know you're quite sort of you said uh, the word nerdy there you know you you're you're involved with a kind of um organization do, do you do you organize the sessions yourself or is it and is the onus more kind of um the motivator if that makes sense or h- how would you describe the relationship in terms of what your day-to-day tasks have been for Varnamo during this uh, amazing season yeah but in the beginning i didn't really know what to expect and i as i mentioned before this was so important for me to find a environment that that challenged me and um, that made made it possible for me to take this tactical technical uh, responsibility again but with this i, I I didn't really know because Jonas was a, you know, is a big, <laughs> a really big figure in Swedish football, so it, it was it was hard to know what to expect. Uh, but from the beginning, he like because of this um, pro license, having like going the 
not because Jonas has not haven't got the license and uh, so they need someone who has it and the like with this uh, like uh, with this he had always said that okay you are the the head coach on the paper and now you act like the head coach so from the beginning I've been I'm the, been the one setting like doing the head coach things that he says like uh, setting up and driving the training sessions for example trying to do maybe not the head coach things but analyzing the next opponent and al analyzing the the last game so a lot of this uh, hands-on coaching in how we start and how we drive the sessions i am like responsible for planning and to set it up and to start it sure and then jonas is uh, with the team making sure that we demand a lot uh, with the team uh, talking shit with the team um, like coaching when he thinks that uh, things okay this can be better and uh, then a lot of with me discussing the session afterwards discussing okay uh, can we change something to the next session can we develop develop this how can we get some more out of the players uh, but also just being the the guy who, who feels the temperature okay are are they the players feeling well are they happy Things yeah like, yeah and that, that's quite a big and um, <clears throat> important thing, isn't it, as well? Just keeping that motivation for the players uh, and keeping the, the spirits high. I mean, we're looking at your, your squad when you took the job. There's not a huge amount of players who really have any kind of top-level or Svenskan experience. I mean, um, obviously, you have Crespo Kamara, who, who, who's, who's played at the top level. Um, but, you know, your top top two scorers in the league have been Oscar, Oscar Johansson and uh, Christian Moses, um, neither of whom sort of play, uh, played at the top level. When, when you first took the role, how did you assess the squad and how did you work about getting the best out of the players that you have under your under your radar? Because, you know, you look at, for example, the teams like Helsingborg, they've got, you know, top top level players, lots of experience, you know, players who've played even for teams like Manchester United, for example, and, and, and uh, you know, teams in the Netherlands, for example, Van den Herk, players like that, Give Sundsvall have got a lot of big players. How did you assess your squad and, and how did you get an edge from that point of view? I would say that, like first, the I think we have uh, three or four players who have like played games in Superettan level, and two players that played in Allsvenskan. So it's um, as you say, it's it wasn't uh, a big experience in the squad. Like the a big groundwork or this uh, this. Um, this thing about like okay the the strength of our squad i would say is the okay we are a team we are a, a squad that work for each other and uh, wants the best for e each other like okay i want to play i want to compete for the for the game i want to start every time but if i'm not starting i'm really happy for the player next to me i'm really happy for the the guy who got that opportunity and and uh, and worked hard for the team Sure. So I think this is a really big strength, and and this work is definitely started by uh, by Jonas and the sporting director, and done in a really good way uh, already last season. And uh, and like, like trying to build on this, like the the young players, the hungry players, the players that have things to prove but also have big skills. Uh, these are the kinds of players that we recruited to the squad this year, but. And uh, and are looking forward to the future as well. And this is, uh, I think, this is the key. You st that we have some, ta we have like four former Malmo players, for example. So, so players with like a history of being talented and being in a good environment, but haven't proved themselves on the on the senior level yet. And this willingness to prove and. <laughs> this is about being, uh, yeah, being hungry every training sessions to to be better and to compete against the teams that, okay, the other teams they are supposed to be better than us, but we can do things here. Yeah, you have uh, also, uh, I think a player on loan, isn't it, Hugo Anderson? Uh, I'm not sure if he's on loan, but he he's from Malmo as well. Who, who has probably maybe your your most valuable player in that sense. He's a young centre back who's had quite a good season. 
Um, tactically, you know, do you have what, what are your kind of core core beliefs or, or philosophies as, as a club? Um, you know, stylistically, I think you've played sort of four three three in in quite a few games. Um, how have you sort of tried to approach it from from that point of view? What are your core, core beliefs? Who who do you learn from in the game in general? Like the coaches that you look up to, maybe you work with things like that. How did you sort of develop your own coaching philosophy and personality? Yeah, uh, coming from Malmo, it's um, it's an environment where uh, from the beginning we're supposed to win, but and with this, um, I okay when I started in Malmo is was a uh, like quite result oriented environment even in the youth academy mm. uh, there was a couple of us who who wanted to be results driven but results driven in a way that okay how can we get the best possible player from the academy to the first team uh, sure. so so this is the base i would say and um, and to do this i i'm quite sure that you have to play in a in a combinative way where you help like you have courage you you are uh, you're getting really comfortable with the ball, and you want to use your teammates to uh, to create like offensive opportunities. So this is the base for me, and you can imagine which kind of coaches I I look up to. It's like from, of course, the the guy who uh, or the team that made me dream in the beginning of my career was the the Barcelona in the, the end the last the late uh, twenty twenty like two thousands, yeah. uh, for example, and and with this. You know, you have the Serbi and Sari and like Peter Bosch and Thomas Tuchel and like this the last year. So in this positional game where you want to, okay, create superiorities, positional and numerical, numerical to, to break the line of the opponent and to attack the, attack the next line. So this is the, the principles in the attack, easily described. Uh, defensively, we are, have a really aggressive setup. We, uh, as you say, we, are, we, we try to play 4 3 3 in defense and we try to to put pressure on the ball possessor all the time. And we try to win the ball back as, as soon as we can, or put the, I would say, maybe, maybe not win the ball back as quick as we can, but to put the put the, the opponent under press as quick as we can, I would say. Mm. Yeah, I mean the Barcelona philosophy is certainly one that you know has attracted a lot of a lot of people in the past. And uh, I mean, you mentioned Malmo there and the influence on you. What, what are your thoughts on? I mean, just just to sidetrack for a second, are you? I don't know if you're a Malmo fan yourself, but working at the club as well as you did, you know, what what are the principles you learned maybe at Malmo? Because Malmo is kind of a club where, like you said, it's all about winning, really, isn't it? And that's the key philosophy. And uh, you know, do you have a perspective on your time at Malmo, the things you learned there, the environment, that kind of thing that that you took with you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I would say from the from the start, it was this um, back to this. Okay, winning at all costs, but maybe maybe not all costs, but almost. And to for me to work around this and to make it more okay, developing quality at all costs. That that uh, that was a pressure itself, like in itself, because we had good players, but. We started to choose some players that okay maybe maybe not the best at the this very second because we uh, we looked away from the physicality who made uh, made them uh, like flourish in that age and looked more for the the technical and the tactical qualities and the physicalities that would flourish when they reached the first team so but to do this in that time it meant that we lost more games than before. So from from the club, not from the club, but you felt this like around you when you were in the club that, mm. okay, this is maybe not the Malmo way, but me and myself, me and some other guys with, with me felt that this is the only way to, to be Malmo because Malmo is curious. Malmo is always looking for the best thing and to develop and it was too much short term and too little quality long term in that in the start so this has of course done a lot with me for my coaching i would i'm much more like secure of myself and what i believe because of the I believe because i i try to work it through i try to 
to have knowledge before I talk or before I coach. Yeah. And I think that's this is has uh, has made something with me. Or and and you coached the sort of uh, under 17s I believe. Is there any players that you sort of work with that have come through now that you you work with particularly in you know, Mamba's first team for example or or maybe gone elsewhere as well because like, you also coached for the Swedish youth teams didn't you as well, I think uh, at one point. Yeah. Uh, there are some. We have like Hugo is one of them who's now with me, not in the first team of Malmö, but loaned from the first team of Malmö, who is now, now in Värnamo. But also Matthias Fomba, who is in Bologna, and uh, yep. Anil Ahmed Hodjic should play for Bosnia, um, Pavlo Vagic in, in Rosenborg. Like the, the first age group for me was the, the 99s. So uh, 99s and like 2000 and 2001, the guys who are just now starting to arrive in the, in the first teams, there are quite a lot i would say which is uh, which is really nice to to follow and to look at the, their games and stuff yeah i mean what matthias Fanberg was one of our very first in the first season i think uh we do a 10 to watch in osvenskan every every year and norway as well and uh Svenberg has been our 10 to watch and then he quickly quickly got snapped up and signed yeah. by signed by bologna he's done done very very well uh and another player who we we've been very fond of is as you mentioned there, Anil i'm hodzic what, what can you tell us about him because he's been linked with a lot of big clubs, uh, Atalanta rumored to be interested in him. Could you tell us a little bit about what it was like to to work with him and you know how you've seen his development? Yeah, of, definitely, uh, of course. He was like a a really grumpy uh, little young boy who hated to uh, not to win and not <laughs> to be the best at all all time uh, when he was young. He one one part of his career under me, he was playing as the as number nine in a in the third, three, first three three fourth three three system, and yeah, he was really comfortable with the ball and really good at like finishing off attacks. But re, uh, back then, uh, but this you know the competitiveness and the, yeah, but the thing of you're never satisfied, always working to be better, always working to prove not accepting uh, not to be chosen and this he uh, his mentality is really uh, really a competitive one in most oftenly a good way some uh, sometimes you know when he now we say maybe always a good way like you know always hello maybe too often like crying and like this after some some losses or after that the game wasn't perfect for him, but I would almost say that this was after the games and because of the passion to the game. So, um, yeah, I'm really passionate, really hardworking all the time and always wanted to be the best. And do you think like as someone who's worked with a lot of uh, youth levels, you know, in different countries as well, as you mentioned in Copenhagen, do you think you need that? Or what, what is the key to sort of a, a young player developing? Because you get so many talented players at youth level. Um, you know, I'm sure at Malmo you saw so many good players and maybe some players who never really made it. What, what, from your point of view, as someone who works in that uh, area before you move to head coach, what are the attributes that you need to make it as a, as a as a player to come through the academy system? You know, what is the, what do you need? What sets what what sets players apart? If you know what I mean, is it is it yeah. mentality or? Yeah, it's a really complex complex question. Um, I would say to to be short i would say the the understanding of space and time the um the quality of not being stressed under press and then the mentality of uh, never giving up i would say this is uh, the three keys for me and of course there's a lot of things in uh, this the space and time understanding it's a lot of things in the the quality of never getting stressed under press, uh, but that's so complex. It's so it's so much many things, but those three I would say just to keep it simple. That's yeah, very. Can you elaborate a little bit on it? Just a little bit, just to widen it out a bit. Yeah, but the understanding of space and time is to, you know, it's it's all from the technique of. Uh, all the technical skills of being able to handle the ball 
in a really tight space, but also in knowing when to play the ball one touch to give the next player a superiority or a, a advantage position. The 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 feeling of never being uh, stressed under press is uh, also the first touch, of course, but also the precision in the next action. How to okay, I can let the guy pressing me coming really close, but I'm always calm and can find the the precision in the pass to get out or the the precision in the okay, I I faint one way, I go to the space with the next touch, just yes. when they are sprinting to me, for example, because. Well, this is the things that we have been looking at when we were looking at players from Alma youth and also, of course, for Valnamo now to, to be able to play the way we want to play. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Uh, and that does lead me on to my next point, the next question, really, which is, um, you know, your sporting director, Hakan Soderberg, I believe his name is, in an interview with Afton Bladet said that he doesn't think that anyone really wants Valnamo in or Svenskan. Um and Jonas Tern also said that, you know, they don't, they wouldn't want a team like us. You know, it's reported that you've got one of the, you know, average attendance is roughly 1,000 fans. The stadium holds 4,300, which is not all Svenskan ready. So you're going to have to make some changes, I believe, to the to the, to the the stadium. And the club, not only is it the smallest, uh, one of the smaller clubs in Svenskan next season, but even in Super Etten, it has the second smallest budget, 11.1 uh, million in turnover last year. I think that's in SEK, in Swedish Krona. And according to the report from Aston Blood, there's only three full-time positions within the club. And it reports that there's as many uh, full-time analysts at Malmo uh, as there are full-time, you know, in their, in their first team analyst department as there is in the whole club at, at Varnamo. So obviously, how are you going to embrace the challenges now to sort of go into Osvenskan? What changes are you going to have to make, e- even in terms of recruitment? How will, you, how will you approach it for the next, you know, season ahead, the, the winter if you if you could look ahead a little bit, I know the season's not ended yet, but how how have there been any conversations about how you're going to meet this challenge? Because it's going to be an enormous challenge to to do that. Uh, I'm I'm all only uh, ready to to answer the questions about the, the football and the football operations because I really don't uh, think so much about uh, the att- attendance and the sure yeah of and course. the arena. I've, but they are doing something about this, I know, of course. My belief is that we have to continue to do very much with the things we have. And um, and one way of this is like understand that, okay, this is the, the things that we do on the pitch is the absolutely most important things. We can, like, if we can maximize these things, we can come a really long way because it's so hard to achieve 100% out of the training session in there are so many aspects to to reach for so if we can getting get close to that we will do really good things that's the that's the belief and to build a squad i think that we want to try to continue this journey like we have a young squad now i think that there are, are so much potential to, to continue to develop in each player so this is the the starting point, I think, to have this this in mind, and that I think we are twenty three point seven years or something in the in the average eleven. So there are so much, so many years to to still to still like push development out of the players. So mm. this is also some potential we have. But in the same in the same way, we I think it's it's good to to look for the. Like the kind of strengthening of the squad that is, uh, you know, in some way similar to the ones we did to this season. And to this season, I think I would say three or four like permanent starters were added, and one two players more that started half of the games. So, in a way, strengthen the squad, but definitely building uh, on this hungry. Uh, players wanting to prove that okay we can we can handle and we can dominate the the next level yeah it's fascinating and and do you do you um i mean we have a partnership with wise on the po- on the podcast so we sort of you know we have the ability to to look at different leagues and things like that do, do you look at you know the different leagues or else fence and things like that you mentioned you're a bit you know you, you you have a deep passion for football um just tell us about your own interest in football do you watch do you watch other leagues things like that you know from a from a coach's perspective to learn and 
do you think that you might even look to recruit from that point of view or will it be a challenge to to attract players to Vanama? do you think i think that uh, one part of the like one part of the answer is the yunas brand is yeah. really really good and uh, also about developing, developing players it's um, it's really interesting for many players in that kind of on that or with that kind of description you know wanting to prove hungry young uh, possible to develop uh, players to uh, to come so i think that okay we were we ain't going to be able to 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 um to transfer the the biggest the biggest names in the league but um maybe guys that are not getting the start, starting position and um wants to prove themselves on the level wants to take the next step so i, I think it will be a quite good situation for us to to build us build a squad i would say and for me the last couple of years has been more like watching watching coaches uh having a game model similar to mine or to my idea of football and trying to understand what they are doing and how to how to learn to be better in some some parts of uh, of their game uh, of course also looking at some other coaches being really 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 good in a in a different kind of game model to understand okay can i can i add something from this and can i can i build my game model on better or stronger by adding this aspect so not not a specific league in that sense for us recruiting i would say allsvenskan rejects in some way and uh, superettan and division one potential uh, really good future players i think this is a a good way of building the squad yeah that's like, fascinating in a, in a way uh, you know looking having uh yeah in a way looking to build a for example with a really nice clear identity uh working in a in one direction over years and years and years and on this building something that shouldn't be possible to build yeah it's fascinating and i think you know what one thing we've learned from a lot of teams who have been successful you know you look at the likes of Varberg boys maybe and you know, also students in the in the past, maybe uh, kind of being creative in their recruitment. Um, it's always different markets and stuff to, to look at, isn't there, and explore. So I'm sure that'll be a, a challenge for you that you might enjoy in the next few months. I mean, in, in terms of your squad itself, uh, I've got a few more questions, then we'll let you go. So thank you for your time. In terms of the squad, you know, who, who have been the key players uh, to look out for from your point of view that have really impressed this season? I mean, you know, it, it always will happen when a team is so successful. You might have maybe bigger clubs looking at your your top players. Are you worried about any of them? Who who have been the sort of key? Could you name maybe a couple that have impressed you this season that you've been really, you know, been, been key to your journey? Yeah, there are some. I I first want to say that because I did this mistake talking to another guy um, <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> it's it's so important um, to have like to to get the the team point of view in this because I would say that this is ninety uh, percent of uh, of the things we do and do well is because the team is so strong the squad is so strong we have maybe not the the, the top players in Superettan but we have a lot of like good players yeah. and a quite even squad of good players so i would say oh, 22 players that we that we choose from every week and that we feel okay they have potential to start but for this and this reason, we choose these players this week. So, I would say the squad and the team is uh, definitely the the biggest the biggest thing for us. And and it also shows in we have this uh, Superettan uh, Player of the Month thing uh, from yeah yeah from the from the league, and we have had one player nominated out of eighteen. Like if you look for the six months that this prize has been given out, so it's it's a lot about the squad. And then, Jonathan, we have been like top of the league almost all the time. Yeah. But only one player out of eighteen. So I think this is 
also some kind of proof that I'm not talking shit. But uh, <laughs> I have, uh, like, I think that we have one player that is really top of the league or the best in the league, looking to a lot of aspects, but especially this time and space and understanding when to help us in which space um, kinds of understanding of the game. And this is Oscar Johansson, also mm -hmm. the guy who has made most points for us, but first and foremost because his his ability to uh, to understand when to bear when to be where is so important for us to to get out of press and to to find a free guy and and so on. Yeah, I mean, if you look at his stats as well, you know, he's been very impressive. You know, expected goals and assists combined eleven. Uh, 0.06 goals and assists total 12. Uh, been a really key player in, in many aspects of the game, as, 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 you, as you said. Um, key passes per 90, he's, he's 0.6 key passes per 90 as well. So really an influential player, the, the 26-year-old. A um, couple more questions for you before we let you go. Um, you know, as, as you said, you've been, you've been top of the league for pretty much the whole season. Um, what would you say was your favourite game of the season, Robin? Or, or you know, if you could name maybe come some of your highlights, some of the best moments of, the, of this campaign or the season so far, or even your coaching role so far, because obviously this is your first season. What have you been your moments where you look, you always remember and look back on? And was there one game where you thought, where, where you know, we're, it's looking good for us here? Really easy question for me. Uh, there are two games, Helsingborg Boy away and Helsingborg Boy home. Really <laughs> easy. <laughs> no, but the joking thing apart, this is true, but still, uh, there have also been a couple of other ones. I think it's both Sundsvall, Sundsvall home and away, because uh, home against Sundsvall is like we lost the first game against Lanskrona, as you said before, and going into to this new um, new league, and okay, as we played against Lanskrona last year, but also not really knowing what to expect. And I think we are so good in the game against Sundsvall. The statistics is... Uh, is also really good and we feel like okay we can really handle this we can, can if we can play like this against a, a, a team like Sundsvall who is supposed to be the the best in the in the league yeah. uh, then we are we can compete in every game in a good way so this one was good uh, also <laughs> like we have done a couple of times after this we finished off in the like 94th minute with a 2-1 goal. So it was also a lot of feelings, you know. So this was nice. And we had had a couple of these uh, endings of the games, uh, who is like finishes in the 92nd, 93rd, 94th, 95th minute. So there's been some like really nice uh, endings of the game and celebrations together, which of course, it's a lot of feelings and a lot of like good feelings and memories to look back on. Mm. But also the game away against Sundsvall were like really shitty result with a, a 2 nil loss. But we played them out of the pitch in the first half. And I think we are, we can create and getting closer to goal before shooting and creating bigger goal chances because this is a thing we didn't do so well in that game, but how we move the ball and how we move them and how we create like a close almost chances was so nice. And like a lot of the football I want our team to play was in that, especially first half, but also I would say in that game. We lost 2 0, but the game was well played. Yeah, and it's. um. I mean, if you look at statistics as well, you mentioned, you know, you, you, you're one of the youngest teams in the league, let alone, uh, you know, the second youngest team average age uh, behind AFC Eskilstina. So, again, it's incredible, really, um, how you've managed to have back-to-back -back promotions as well. It's, 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 you know, almost unreal, really, what you've done this season. Um, expected goals, you've sort of been mid-table, in fact, but but expected goals, again, the second best in the league. And it just shows that you kind of been very efficient, haven't you, in front of goal and, and also keeping goals out. And um, before I let you go, you know, it's been really great to talk to you. And by the way, I, I get a definite feeling that, uh, you know, Helsingborg, a certain definite rival of yours, I, I can feel the Malmo in you, if that makes sense. Um, but uh, what are your future plans from here? Because obviously your next step is going to be, you know, Osvenskan. 
Um, you still got a few more games left this season, of course, but then you'll have a have a break. You'll be ready for for next season. What what you know? Do you have long term plans? Because you're such a young manager. You know, um, do you have sort of future long long term plans? What what are your thoughts on that from that point of view? That's a good question. I'm. Um, I've been. I want. Like I've been. Worth, uh, I've been looking for a a place uh, to be and to be developing something that because uh, this this kinds of you know build a Bournemouth this this kinds of uh, stories I like them a lot. I I believe that if you want to to do uh, to build something uh, over time, then then it can can get as close at, as possible to the to the highest potential and so this is the the things that has like tickled tickled me a lot mm. and so this is also what i've been been dreaming of and why i was looking into vanamu a lot because yeah the the place of uh, maybe getting the chance to be more process oriented and uh, and so on uh, with this it's also you know really special uh, living as a coach so uh, you will see you know the we haven't lost so many games this season season which is really good but you know the games we have lost poof i don't like this feeling you know so this <laughs> has been some really hard times those those five games and those those weeks after those five games so we will see i'm always also been looking for a way to find the yeah you know the the long term um, well-being in working in this this game this environment so um it's it's really hard to give a a short and good answer but a a more philosophical one maybe do you think that just based on that i mean it's quite interesting you touch on that um do, do you think it's quite hard to deal with when you when you lose games or is it because maybe you're, you're a young coach and, and just just learning if that makes sense you know because that's i mean we had an episode recently with the manager of uh of a uh, Stordal Blink in the Norway second division, Tom Dent, and he talked about mental health in as as a manager in football. He's a young manager as well. Um, so I want just wanted to get your perspective on that because you, you mentioned it there. You know, taking defeat badly, and and also you know we've had um, Buda Glimp sporting director on the pod as well, and 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 obviously they've been in the news after beating Roma six one, an incredible result. Do, do you feel like the challenge for you now is to sort of deal with the, the pressures of being a manager, and then maybe your long term vision is to sort of create a kind of a, a Buddha glimp type situation at Varnamo. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, in some way to, to handle and to understand um, like this job, maybe because I, I cannot really put a finger on uh, what what it is, because I would say that I'm really process oriented and I I hate not being the best, but losing has yeah, it's it's um, for some reason this is a part of it, uh, I guess. So I've been trying to understand why and how to deal with it during the season because this um, this is important for the for the future of the career. I would definitely say so. Uh, like landing in the being accepting that okay, we cannot maybe we cannot dominate the games that we want that we want to dominate the games mm. uh, as much as we can always because of course there's an opponent that tries to to make it really hard for us and destroy for us every second of the game but yeah i don't know because this is also the passion you know to have to have the ball and to create something with the ball all the time so <laughs> it's a it's a really moment 22 situation yeah, I get you on that, and it's quite fascinating to end it with. Yeah, I mean, the, the episode for those listeners who may want to have a, might not have heard this one, manage, mental health and management in football, uh, September the twenty eighth. We had an interview with Tom Dent, so you know, maybe relating to this topic, it could be interesting to hear another manager's perspective. But uh, Robin, it's been so good to talk to you. I, I really enjoyed it, and um, you know, you've, you've touched on a lot of points there. And again, I just have to congratulate you on this amazing success you guys have had. Uh, looking forward to seeing Vinamo next season in, in Osvenskan, and. Uh, you know, keeping in touch, hopefully, and maybe maybe get you on again next 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 year. Maybe when uh, when you get to play the teams like Malmo and the Oiko and places like this, it'll be some challenge, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, I can imagine right now you have you've got uh, your feet up, some champagne. Uh, you've knocked knocked Helsingborg a few places down as well, which I'm sure you're very happy about. So uh, th thank you so much for joining on this us uh, on this week's show. Yeah, you know that doesn't hurt. 
<laughs> thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> Take care now and good luck uh, in the future with this. Thank you very much. And yeah, for those um, who uh, enjoyed this bonus episode, you can follow us on, on Twitter at Nordic Footpod. Uh, you can also catch us, um, uh, you can catch me on Twitter at, at JF Football, J F F U T B O L, and, uh, and and my colleague, Meat Man Soccer, uh, Steve Wiss, at Meat Man Soccer. Robin, I don't know if you're on social media at all, or you, do you use that kind of thing um, to, to engage at all? Or as a manager, do you like to close off from it? If you if you are, feel free to plug plug any links you want. Yeah, no, no. For, for now, I, for now, I use it. So uh, it's just to search my name, then you can find it. Fantastic stuff. So, yes, thank you so much, uh, Robin Astahead. You've done an amazing job, uh, and uh, we look forward to keeping in touch with you and, and see how your career goes. But for, for this week's show, that'll be all for now. We will be back. We're going to be talking about uh, Poy Aspargi, the new manager of Barnsley. Uh, in uh, in England that's a big talking point at the moment so we will sort of touch on that in future episodes for those who are listening I know a lot of Barnsley fans have been messaging us asking about him so uh, we will be back uh, as soon as possible next week with uh, obviously the last few rounds of Osvenskan and Super uh, and uh, Alita Serian as well so thank you so much for listening my name is Jonathan Baduba uh, and Robin Asterhead thank you so much again for joining us take care and goodbye